it's no secret that I'm a pastor. And no doubt a lot of my viewpoints and perspectives come strictly from the word. Yet, when it's my opinion, whether it be here on YouTube uh, making a video, or if I'm in the pulpit preaching, or if I'm privately counseling someone, I usually try um, to make sure. And I usually try to make sure that they have my attention when I'm giving my opinion. And some things is, you know, I really just don't need to stop every second to tell you, okay, this is my opinion. You should be able to tell. But it's getting very increasingly difficult in the hour that we're living in now where people would actually listen to you one, two, three, four years and still not know you like they claim that they do. Um, I'm sure that many of you, you listen to me on YouTube, but you really truly don't know me as a man, especially as a man of y'all, um, as far as behind that pulpit. You know, I have a, a website back here that you can view uh, our church services, if that's what you like to call it. Uh, that's your prerogative. That's your right. You have so-called freedom of speech. Every Shabbat, that means Sabbath day. Um, I'm sure to me you're not familiar with that, but that's the seventh day of the week. Um, here in America, they call it Saturday. Only one problem, though, Saturday is not the seventh day. Saturday is the, a mixture between the seventh day and the first day. Uh, I'm not going to go into giving y'all a theological um, or a theological understanding about all of that, but I came here to say this, that it's getting pretty harsh and the spirit of man is getting pretty cruel. When someone can come on YouTube and not be able to state their opinion or their belief without being... Um, Attacked. I mean, literally attacked because, I mean, have many of you ever thought about why you get so disturbed at some of the things that people say? I mean, there's a few few things that um that I, I've, I've looked at in the past few months, and I literally get disturbed. I really, truly do. I can feel that spirit rising up in me, and, and but I can tell you the reason why I get disturbed. I get disturbed because of the spirit of collusion. Meaning that people refuse to actually check out other people's viewpoints. Um, go behind them and see if what they're saying is so. Before continually owning their position or adopting a position against them. Uh, that seems to be the American way. You know what I mean? After all, um, we base truth on what we want. What we want to define it as. And, and of course we believe that the whole world evolves around us. Sorry to tell you that it doesn't. Um, but people have the right to say whatever they want. But it's amazing in this country right here that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a strong figurehead. You know, a lot of people uh, listen to me. I actually have more people that listen to me that would not admit it than actually admit it and do. Um, and the reason why, because I'm very raw, uh, brutal, brutally honest, um, and upfront. Um, I've been. Felice, I've been toyed around and played around within a religion of Christianity. <clears throat> and at one time I was very bitter uh, against that particular religion until I started studying and find out that when, when someone is lying, just tell the truth. Just expose the truth and then that way everyone that is of the truth, they would hear the truth and then they would walk in it. Sure, everybody's going to um, experience a measure of hatred. Um, towards uh, messi the Messianics and the Christians when they start really truly becoming proactive and start looking behind uh, all the things that they promote as well as just like in the in the political ring um, you don't have to look too far at all to see that every politician up there is a liar I mean that's just bottom line our uh, history in this country has been so jacked up and screwed up it's, it's just amazing I tell you, it's, it's remarkable. I don't know um, where a revival or revolution would come from in this country since the people are just so divided. You know, the machine has done a very good job at conquering us and dividing us. 
Uh, they've done it on the social, and now they're really working hard on the religious point. And you know, I, I, for instance, I have no Muslims out there that is my enemy. Um, and and I yet and still I think that the Muslims have the right um, to practice worshiping whoever they want. Um, just like I believe that a Christian has a right to practice his religion. But when you ask me what I believe, don't get all upset because I don't agree with you. Because both the Muslim and the Christian and the Messianic, we all claim to be reading the Torah. Uh, but the bottom line is, some of us are just practicing a religion. And some of us are actually really truly walking after the real true faith with the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit that can only come by the Ruach. And everybody can't make that claim and lay that claim. So Pastor Dow chose a long time ago to come out of religion because it is not doing nobody any good. Um, but I do know this, anytime you embrace the truth, I don't care what truth that is, and I said this once, I said it a thousand times, whether it be social, political, e economic, or religious. No matter what truth that is, whenever you embrace the truth, you get ready to become an enemy of 99.9% .9 of the people who you ever thought at one time was fond of you or they cared about you because people love the utopia of lies. They have accepted it and they have clothed themselves in it. Uh, they have made lies their life and they have made lies their pavilion. It's their safety. And anytime you start coming around uh, with a light of truth, um, you're, you're going to find an enemy um, worse than you've ever seen in your life. So, believe it or not, I, I, don't, I don't have any Muslim enemies, Christian enemies, Messianic enemies. Now, they may be enemies with me, but I'm not that way with them. And, of course, I always say, you know, if there is contentions and there's disagreement, there's always... Um, an, an avenue to have an open forum and civil discussion it's just that I try to narrow it down a lot because I, I would rather talk to you know someone who's got gray hair on their face kind of like I do you know someone who's like 45 and older you understand what I mean someone who's been in this for like um, a minimum 20 years you know I would like to talk to someone um, who has a little bit more tact a little bit more respect in order just to engage in a civil dialogue and that we can have an intelligent conversation and speak intelligently so that the audience in itself can be able to judge the spirit of truth. Um, and I mean, if you disagree with somebody, why not? I mean, I, I put those prerequisites down because I'm a pastor. I don't have time to run around people who've been holding the Bible for two months or who have been bought up in the religion of Christianity and know three scriptures, two scriptures, three, three scriptures. Um... um and never open up the Bible, but base everything on opinion. Uh, I don't want to, you know, follow no one who is in their messianic religion, um, because all they're doing is practicing Judaism. They're just not telling you. It's just like Christians are practicing Catholicism, Roman Catholicism. It's just that they're not being honest with you. Uh, it makes no difference whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Catholics, Apostolic, Pentecostal. They all say that they're Christian, so they all uh, are coming from the, the Church of Rome. But Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, Solomon, um, Peter, James, John, Jesus, Yahshua, none of them were Christians. I know that the uh, Greeks and the Romans, they called them that, but that didn't make them that. I mean, people call me all kind of things here in this country. Uh, that doesn't make me that, but, you know, to become proactive is um, it is what it's going to take. And to become a doer in the hour that we're living in. Sure, I'm going to say a lot of things, a lot of things, especially if you follow me on that video, live video streaming website, I'm going to say a lot of things that, that is flat out you are just not going to like. And you're not going to like the way it says. Like I said, I'm a man. Um, and I speak straight forth. Um, I love people. I love people a lot. I, and I don't want to see anybody, um, especially when there's opportunity for truth to be told, I don't want to see them being destroyed for a lack of knowledge no more than I want to see myself destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But think about it, as a pastor, I'm a pastor, wouldn't you rather have someone that is just going to tell you the truth, whether you like it or not, you can make the decision or determination whether you're going to listen to them or not, rather than someone who has an illusion that they're telling the truth, someone who fits what you call the paradigm or the bill, 
and, and make you feel good and feel comfortable in lies. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And, I, and I'll say it again. Uh, and I'll start right here at home. Any preacher, teacher in Lafayette, Tennessee, Pastor Dallas open for an open civil discussion or debate in an open forum. If you disagree with the way that we are doing. And that goes for anybody who has 20 plus years experience of being what you call a pastor or in any religion whatsoever at all. Um, and got, look at this, some gray hair on you, your face. Um, I don't think that's being uh, biased. I really truly don't. And I'm sure that there's a lot of young intelligent men out there. Uh, I was I'm, I, At the time I was considered a young intelligent man too, but I have tenure behind me. So I do understand the dynamic of being 20, living in my 20s. I understand the dynamic of being in my 30s. And now I'm in my 40s, getting ready to go off into my 50s. So I understand the dynamic of that. I really truly do. Um, so I, I'm trying to stimulate thought amongst people. Um, and that's the only thing about it. But you know what? Uh, the fruit of this ministry, uh, you ought to see the letters I get in. Uh, and a beautiful letter I just received this from this week. Someone who just went down a list of bullet points about what has happened since he's been in this ministry uh, a little over a year. And how that the Most High has immensely blessed him. I tell you what, it caused everybody in the dining hall to rejoice. It, it really did cause them to lift up their hands to see the deliverance, the salvation, and, and the growth that is going on with this particular brother. And I'm, I'm proud of you, brother. Continue to keep going. And the peace that passes all understanding will be yours. That's my hope that peace that will pass understanding will, will all, be all of yours too. It really would. I ask that you do your due diligence. I ask that you would check out the things that I teach. Check out the things that I say. Uh, get your Bibles. Um, check out the things that I say on a political or social front or economic front. Uh, get out your history books. Get out your economic books. See if what I'm saying is so. Uh, no sit and argue and fight with someone because you don't like what they say because you're not familiar with whether you know whether where they're coming from. Um, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, uh, and it's time for us to stop being destroyed. I hope I said something that would you know at least spark an interest or bring about an inspiration. I'm going to be making some videos here uh, in the next upcoming days, um, speaking to those of you who have been invited to come to the gathering of the saints. I'll be talking to you here in these videos pretty soon. Y'all be encouraged. Be encouraged. The king is coming.